Heidi Ho, YouTubers. According to the National Highway Safety Traffic Administration, the odds of being in a fatal car crash are about 1.13 for every 100 million miles traveled. That's pretty good odds that you're going to be safe when you get in the car and go to the store tomorrow. But if you're smart when you climb in that car, you'll buckle up. That's because if you are in that fatal car crash, the consequences are too great to be even imagined. I'm pretty sure that most of you out there are well aware of what an EMP or a coronal mass ejection are. The odds of one of those things happening are probably pretty slim too. But with all the strife in the Middle East, and NASA predicting possibly the worst solar maximum storm cycle of our lifetime, those odds are getting a little bit better all the time. In an SHTF scenario, I don't really believe we have to live like cavemen and dig for grubs in the dirt. Having some technology available allows us to not only have a better chance to survive, but to maybe have a better quality of life in case SHTF does happen. So, I decided it was worth a little bit of my time and effort to take some precaution in case there was a CME or EMP. My seat belt, as it were. In the late 1800s, a cat by the name of Michael Faraday invented what's called a Faraday cage. It can protect anything inside of it from electrical or magnetic fields. A Faraday cage doesn't have to be actually a cage. It can be a metal box or even a metal trash can as long as it has overlapping metal on all six sides. I was at this estate auction and there was this metal file cabinet that I figured would do the job nicely. It was all banged up on one of the back corners so I picked it up for, check this out, a buck. I banged out the dents as best I could and gave it a coat of spray paint with some cheap China Mart paint. I'm not really terribly interested in how it looks because it's going in our extended pantry where I won't let anybody in except for uh, maybe the whole world on YouTube. I couldn't find a lot of information online about whether a Faraday cage should be grounded or not. I figured, what the heck, it couldn't hurt. So I drilled a hole in the wall, Mrs. Goat Hollow loves that, stuck the fattest wire I could find in the hole, sanded off some of the paint on the side of the file cabinet, and bolted it on as tightly as I could. The wire goes through the wall to the outside and is firmly clamped to an 8-foot copper grounding rod. Word to the wise, don't try to put an 8-foot copper grounding rod into the soil while the ground is still frozen. It'll kick your butt. I guess that's about it. Oh, now, the bottom of a file cabinet has an open hole. So I used some galvanized screen wire and screwed it on to seal that off. You have to keep your electronics electrically insulated or isolated from the box. Some rubber matting would be great. I suppose glass or wood would work just as well. I stole some glass baking dishes from Mrs. Goat Hollow. <laughs> there isn't much warning for an EMP, but by keeping an eye on the political world, Maybe a guy could get some kind of an idea when to throw things in his Faraday box. I try to check spaceweather.com several times a day to look for CMEs. I could think of a lot of different electronic 
gizmos that I'd like to put in my Faraday box or cage and save for after SHTF use. I bet you folks out there could think of an awful lot more. Hint, hint, comment section. I have enough skills to wire a house and enough basic electronics ability to do something like wire up my cheap solar system shown here. But by no means am I smart enough to be an electrical engineer or anything. So if any of you out there have any suggestions or comments, I'd love to take a look at them. In the meantime, for about 15 bucks and two or three hours worth of work, I've given myself at least some peace of mind in case one of these CMEs or EMPs does happen. We have to learn to anticipate 20 or 30 moves ahead, looking at what obstacles the future might have for us, and then figuring out what we can do to mitigate any adverse problems that the future might hand us. That's what prepping's all about, learning to think ahead and outside of the box. And if we can train ourselves to do that, we might just get through this.